Want to learn how to make clothing like this using Puff HTV? Let me show you how. What's good everyone? Welcome to the studio. Today I'm going to be talking about one of my favorite materials that I use, Puff HTV. So why do I like Puff HTV? Well, first of all, Puff is fucking awesome. Second of all, you don't need a screen printer to do this anymore. And third, I think it just looks amazing and it's an easy way to make your clothing stand out. Puff printing has actually been around for a very long time, but in the last 10 years, I think it's really been coming back and especially in the last three to four, I've been seeing it all around Instagram and it's a perfect time to jump on this train because you can do it from your house using a vinyl cutter and heat press. So why do you want to use Puff HTV? Well, first of all, like I was saying earlier, it looks fucking dope. And second of all, it's such an easy way to just add a little bit of texture, a little bit more dimension to your designs so you can really make it stand out on your garment. And it's honestly not that much more expensive than buying another plastic transfer or another type of vinyls. I think it's a perfect way to add some extra value to your goods so you can also mark it up just a little bit more to increase your margin. So how I use the puff. I have the cameo cutter to cut my vinyl. I have the heat press nation 16 by 20 auto to press the shirts. And that's pretty much it. That's all you need to make this happen. One of the biggest challenges that I've been seeing from some people is that they don't know how to apply it correctly. And I'm gonna kind of walk through how I do it and hopefully that'll help you out with any troubleshooting that you might have. The way I use Puff HTV is first I order it from Econo Transfer, the Econo Puff. And the reason why I get that one was because I went on YouTube, did my research, and honestly, it was the first one that looked good to me. So I ordered it, ran a bunch of tests myself, and it came out really good. Some of the troubleshooting issues I'll cover later, but that's basically why I chose it. I'm not saying it's the best, but to me, it works really, really well. So if you wanna try EconoPuff, there's actually a link in the description below, which you can get 10% off affiliate. So yeah, give it a shot and then let me know how it goes for you. But there's no other reason why I picked EconoPuff besides the fact that it worked for me without a lot of troubleshooting. And you know, and it's all about finding the path of least resistance to getting to your final product. So it works for me and that's why I went with it. And next, the equipment that I use is the Cameo 4. So the cut settings really depends, right? Because every machine is a little different. Everyone has a different blade. The machine age might play a role in how it cuts. But here are some settings that I found that works best for me using Puff. And also Keynote, I found out that some of the colors cut differently than the white and black. So just make sure that you don't just autopilot and put in the same settings before you cut. I like to always test a small piece before I cut a large roll because there's nothing worse than messing up a bunch of vinyl. And you already know this, but my press is the 16 by 20 auto open from Heat Press Nation. It's the first one that I bought and I love it. I've had it for over a year now. It's given me no problems and it's just been awesome. So that's the press that I use, the cutter that I use, and then the material that I use. On the market, there's a lot of different choices. Like I know that Caesar actually has their own version of Puff and I've tried it. And honestly, it kind of looks the same as Econo, so I don't know what's going on, but maybe they have the same base vendor. I don't know. Don't shoot the messenger. But if you want to try Caesar, go ahead. The settings are a little bit different for Caesar. I think it applies like 10 degrees cooler than the Econo, so they might not be the same. And the apply time is about the same, so you don't really save that much time in bulk production. So I think it's best to say that you should give it a try and then see which one you like better yourself. One of the other things that I found is that you can actually order sheets of puffed plastisol. Some companies like TKO does it. Um, there's another company that does it. I forgot their name, but I know some companies offer it and I've actually tried them out as samples, but I just didn't like the way it came out. I found that they actually cracked a lot easier than the HTV because the HTV actually has a lot of flex in it. And that's why I like HTV because it has so much flexibility and stretch that it can actually hold up really well when your fabric has to flex a lot, like mesh shorts or joggers or stuff like that that you wear on your lower body versus like a shirt, right? Like a logo just kind of sits there. It doesn't really move. But pants are a very active piece of garment, if that makes sense, because it's always moving. And I think the Puff HTV works so much better than Plastisol. I definitely want to work with a vendor that has the sheets ready because I would rather just have a sheet order than cut my own vinyl to do this, but I haven't found something that works yet. So if you are a vendor, let me know and I would love to try your product. One of the biggest issues that I found a lot of people run into is that they can't get the settings right. And I personally don't think it's that bad. You just have to tweak a couple things like the pressure and the temperature, and then usually it kind of works out. One of the biggest problems that I found is that the puff doesn't puff as much or the puff has a weird texture on it. And the two common pitfalls for this is one, your pressure is not high enough. And second, your temperature is also not high enough. So tweak with those settings and see if that works for you. The only time that I've seen this happen was with a different color. When I was pressing white only, everything was perfectly fine. But when I switched between different colors, I started seeing these textures and I had to increase the pressure a lot. So make sure you keep that in mind if you're gonna layer a bunch of Puff HTV. And don't make this stupid mistake like what I did. When I was first starting out, I thought that the heat can rise the Puff a little bit more. I don't know why I thought that. But basically I'll press it once and then I'll bring in a sheet and I'll hover it with like a little bit of pressure but what was actually happening was I was flattening the puff. So don't do that. Just press it once, go on with your day, 
and get into the next one. And what's good about the puff is that because it is HCV, if you mess it up, you can actually use that liquid detergent thing. Um, I don't know what the brand's called, but you can actually use that to remove the puff. It is gonna leave a little bit of residue. So make sure that whatever design you put over it is gonna go straight on top of it because it might show some marks through it if it's a different design. And I guess I can show some stuff that I made. So here is the puff double layer. Um, I don't know if this camera can focus. There we go. Yeah, so this is the puff double. So I did a stack of the puff black outline with the white on top. Came out pretty cool. I did the same thing on a hat. So this is a foam trucker hat. Uh, the focus is trying to find it, but hopefully it's in focus. But yeah, this is a trucker hat. Same thing, double press. And you can see there's no scorch marks because I use the Hotronics 360 and that thing is awesome. So this is the last one I wanna I want show you guys. And the reason why this one looks a little funky is because I actually put the outline on top of the background. And when you're working with Puff HCV double layers, you have to make sure that the background is the base and then on top of it, you are putting on the highlights. And that's why the other one looks so much better. Because if you look at this, this has a black base and then the white actually fills on top of it. So if you're gonna double layer it, just keep that in mind, is that the base should be the outline and the top should be the highlights. That's about it for today. There's nothing much I wanna talk about this besides you know all the videos that I make on Instagram, you can check it out for the more process oriented stuff. But in reality, all this stuff is just trial and error. So just go out there, use the settings that I gave you as a base and then tweak it a little bit to find what works best for you because that's how you really find out the true settings of what works. I hope this video was helpful for you and inspired you to hit that Puff HCV on your next project. And if you wanna get any of the materials, the equipment, or anything that I talk about in my videos, you can get it in the description box below. It's an affiliate link, so I get a little kickback and it supports my channel and my business, so I'll greatly appreciate that. Let me know if there's anything else you guys wanna see from me in the future because as I grow this channel, I wanna make sure that it's more of a community and not just me throwing videos at you. So let me know in the comments and I'll catch y'all next time. Peace.